time for another fixing faulty eBay junk video and if you watch my previous upload you'll have seen that I had a big pile of faulty consoles and systems and I put it to the viewers of my channel I asked what system would you like to see me start on next? What would you like to see me try and fix first? And surprisingly, or at least surprisingly to me, the majority of people wanted to see the Philips CDI. So if you chose something else, don't worry, I'll get around to it eventually. I think the next thing people wanted to see, the next most uh, popular item was the Super Wild card for the Nintendo, the backup system. Uh, but yeah, most people wanted to see the, the Philips CDI. So I've got it over there, ready to have a look at it. But this is the uh, the listing here. You can't actually see the, the details anymore because it's been uh, so long since I bought it, but it's faulty. I think from memory um, <clears throat> the seller had said that it had a, a faulty DVD or not DVD, CD tray and that was the, the main issue with it, but it says it's in very good condition. We'll have a look at that, see if that's true. And I paid £20 for this with a uh, £10 postage fee on top of that, so £30 all in, which is pretty good. These tend to go for around uh, around £100, I think, in the uh, box complete in working condition. So if I get it working, that would be great. If not, I could just use it as parts or something, just the usual what I do with these uh, systems. But yeah, Philips CDI, it's like a, a CD-based multimedia console. It wasn't very popular. It was a bit of a commercial failure. I think it's sold something like 1 million units over 7 years, so yeah, really not that popular. Um, I've never actually seen one myself, so I'm kind of interested to uh, take this out of the box and see what it's like, but yeah, I'll get this laptop out of the way and we can take a look at it. So it comes in its original box, which is kind of uncommon to see, but one of the really annoying things that the, the seller did was instead of putting this in a a bag or another box, they've just shipped it as it is, so I don't know if any of you noticed, but in the picture of the, the auction listing, none of this tape was on here, so what they've gone and done is just covered the whole thing in all this masking tape and pretty much ruined the, the original box and then just shipped it as it is without any extra packaging. It really kind of annoys me when, when people do that, it's just laziness, uh, but yeah, whatever. Um, kind of devalues the, the system a bit because the box is now pretty much knackered, but whatever. So let's open this up and take a look at the system. So it should come with everything in here. Uh, the documentation, you've got all the different languages there. So let's see what's in here. It should be pretty much everything. Yeah. Uh, win back the price of your Philips CDI and win free software. I might have shot there. So yeah, just the, the regular bump here little protective thing for the CD tray. Nothing particularly interesting. You've got the manual here. Uh, activate your CDI player. Yeah, nothing particularly interesting there. So let's get the rest of this out. It's the system here. Got a SCART cable. I think the, yeah, the power cable is actually trapped in here. there. And we've got the controller as well, which is uh, seems to be in really nice condition. It's a bit dusty, but yeah, looks good. So far, so good. And uh, it's got like a, an analog stick on it there. It's good to have that. So let's take this out. It's got all the original. A polystyrene foam holding it in place. A bag there. Let's just shove this out of the way. Okay. Oh, it's got quite sharp edges. So that's the system right there. Quite a kind of sleek uh, black, I suppose, like 90s look to it. Looks a bit like a, a VCR, but I can already tell that this has been opened before because you can see there. I'm not able to see it in camera too well. These side panels are all loose, so someone's obviously yeah. I can see the screws are obviously not connected properly there. So someone's obviously already been into this, which is never a good sign. But 
whatever we can take a look at it and see if there's any major issues that's the back of it there so you've got your scart and your video and everything there power bit of a scratch on the front here you can just about make that out just there so next thing to do let's get this hooked up to the TV and see if it actually powers up and what the problem is with it we've got the scar and the power hooked up to it now so let's fire up we've got the on off switch at the side here and a couple of other buttons but if we just hit that you can hear it buzzing and it turns on and it comes up on the, the screen which is a good sign it is at least working it's not completely dead and you can move the cursor around the, the screen as well using the yeah, little analog joystick and the remote. So from memory the the seller had said that the, the disc tray was the main issue with this. It wasn't ejecting or wasn't reading or something like that. So um, if we just select to open this up, so hit open. Yeah, you can see it's not ejecting properly. I don't think it closes either, does it? Yeah, it's kind of getting stuck. So, let's go back again. And you can see the, the belt here that opens up. You maybe can't. This little belt here is pretty much done. It's really, really loose. So, that could be the, the main issue why this isn't opening and closing properly. But, next thing to do is get this opened up and we can take a look at that properly and see if there's anything more obvious because someone's already been into this for some reason and I'm guessing it's something to do with that disc tray there and there's probably going to be something else, I suspect. Before I open it up, one last thing to test, I suppose, is to, to put a CD in it and see if it can read that, even if I just fully close the door myself. not spinning up, it's not making any noise, so it's potentially going to have a problem with the, the motor in there as well that spins the, the disc, so that's another thing just to take a look at when we're, we're in there. So yeah, I'll go get a screwdriver and we can open this up. That's all the screws removed, it used a, a T8 bit to, to remove them, security bit, so let's pop this off and let's see what we're dealing with. Just comes off like that. Let's put that over in the sofa and not scratch anything. So, yeah, quite dusty as you'd expect. And some capacitors there, and the I'm guessing that's the power circuitry there. This looks like some sort of expansion unit here. There's a, a door on the back. I don't think that's got anything in it at the moment. It might do. I haven't had a look yet. And uh, there's the, the uh, CD tray that has given us the, the issues at the moment. But everything looks to be in order. Nothing major missing that I can see. Everything looks like it's connected. So next up I'll try and get this CD tray out. To get better access to the CD drive I've taken the, the front panel off. You can see that there. That was just held in by three screws along the, the top there and then it was clipped in at the bottom. And then there's these two, there's a ribbon cable, this one here, and then there's a set of wires here that's on a plug and they just plug directly into the, the main board that's under there. So that's given me much better access to the CD tray, CD drive. So the next thing I'll do is see how that connects in there and Try and get that out. Fast forward about 20 minutes and I finally got this CD drive out. It was a bit of a, a nightmare to get it out of there. It was held in by two screws at the back here and then there's two at the front that are kind of hidden. They go into the, the chassis here. But everything was hidden from view. So there's these little access holes here. But you need to have them all lined up just perfectly before you can even access the screws. And then, to make things even more complicated, there's a, uh, a ribbon cable that sits right underneath there, you can see the connector for it. Uh, and that sits right underneath the drive and then there's another two power cables, there's one here and one here. 
and then they're kind of hidden underneath here. So yeah, a bit of a nightmare getting this thing out, but I got it in the end. And I have now kind of hit a bit of a, a roadblock. I'll just open this up. Apart from that drive belt there needing replaced, you can see it's flopping all over the place. It's way too loose. That should be easy enough to uh, replace, and that should sort out the, the problem with the, the tray not opening and closing properly. But the other problem I have noticed, and this might be quite difficult to show on camera, I'll try and get a good shot, but you can see here, this is the, the spindle that the um, and the motor that the, the CD will sit on and spin. And I don't know if you can really make this out, but if I try and move that, it's really, really stiff, and it sounds like it's actually grinding off the, uh, the base plate here. So it looks to me like that motor has burnt out and I'll need to replace it um, because if you remember when I put the CD in you didn't hear it spin up or anything so that kind of indicates to me that this motor is bad so I'm going to replace a uh, or get order a replacement one of these I think they cost, I just had a quick look online and they cost about I think it's about $10 including the, the shipping so I'll get that ordered up I need to wait for that to come in hopefully this is the laser assembly here hopefully there's no problem with the the laser assembly because getting a replacement one of those looks like it's near enough impossible unless you want to pay like a couple of hundred dollars or something it's kind of ridiculous it's one of these parts that is a uh, probably unique to these systems so yeah you're unlikely to find a replacement of those at any at a decent price anyway but i'm hoping that the chances of the drive belt being totally worn out and that motor being worn out and the laser being uh, burnt out is kind of unlikely. Hopefully it's just this little motor in here and that drive belt. So what I'll do now is I'll order those parts up. So I suppose I'll end this part of the video or this section of the, the project here and I'll come back to it once those parts arrive. Maybe in the meantime I'm, I'll start one of the other projects. So yeah, for now, that is where I'm at with the, the CDI. Got the drive out, need to order those parts, and then hopefully it's just a case of replacing them and putting it all back together again. It is going to be a bit of a nightmare getting that motor out of there because the laser housing is kind of held in place by these rubber dampeners, which look like they could be quite fragile. If you mess them up when you're trying to get them out, you could be uh, looking at a, a, a bit of a disaster but hopefully that shouldn't be too much of a, an issue but yeah what I'll do is I'll order those parts and then I'll do like a part two of this video and see if we can't get this CDI back up and running again so thanks for watching and I'll hopefully catch you again soon